The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. In the year 2000, Ben Heckendorn built his first mod. We can rebuild it. Smaller. Better. Portable. Since then, he has continued his work, helping those in need with creative new projects. If you've got an idea you'd like to see built, why not send it to The Ben Heck Show? Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Today's project is something I've been wanting to build for a while. Automatic sunglasses that raise and lower themselves based on the intensity of the surrounding light. Now, a lot of you have been asking for a project that doesn't require a CNC, laser, or 3D printer. So we'll be doing this one by hand. Let's get started. Auto sunglasses. You clip them on and they flip up and down depending on sunlight. The parts we're going to need. I'm going to use an AT Tiny microcontroller. Um, it's cheap and easy to use and it'll make our glasses smart. Smart glass. Photo cell. It's a resistor whose um, resistance changes based off the amount of light coming in. The more light, the less resistance. And finally, the smallest servo we can find. We're going to program it using AVR Studio 6, not Arduino which means we're gonna need our AVR Mark II programmer. But that's good, that's like the low level way to do things. It's kind of the right way. Arduino's great, it's easy and all, but sometimes you need to use AVR Studio. Here's our circuit. We have our AT Tiny here, microcontroller. Uh, gonna have our voltage come in here, probably five or six volts. Here's our photo cell. We uh, pull the photo cell high by putting positive voltage on this end. We hook up the ADC here, and there's a voltage divider with the 10K pull down resistor here. So the less resistance or more light hit, that hits the photo cell, it'll allow the current to come through, which will um, increase the voltage here. If this, is, if this is dim, which means it's not letting through the positive voltage, it'll pull the ADC closer to ground. It's a voltage divider, basically. Which way does the voltage go up or down? Uh, we have an output pin here going to the servo a cap just to stabilize it a little bit, and a 10K pull-up resistor on the reset line so it doesn't reset. So the ADC number we're looking for, a high number means bright, a low number means dim, and the range on the ADC will be 10 to 1023, which is a 10-bit value. Sometimes you'll see like the depth of an ADC. Uh, the reason it's 10-bit is a 8-bit gets you 0 to 255, 9 bit gets you 0 to 512 or 11, and 10 bits gets you 0 to 1023. It's because of memory addressing. Glasses themselves, I want to actually use this, like take it to Maker Faire. So I'm going to make this be a clip on for my normal glasses so it adds on without destroying the glasses. Indoors, they'll be you know, flipped up as much as possible, but can't go too far back or you'll hit your forehead. Outdoors, they should be as flush to the glasses as possible. But of course, we also don't want to scratch the glasses because the glasses aren't cheap. Okay, automatic sunglasses. We need to figure out a way to control them. We could probably do it with a 555 timer, but just like the plant, I'm going to be lazy and use an AT Tiny. I've got a little development board here that you can put the AT Tiny into. So we're gonna have to program this using AVR Studio 6, um, or I guess you could use AVR Studio 5.1. They do have Arduino libraries for the Tiny, but I haven't had very much luck with them. So we'll just program this in raw C using AVR Studio. We include all the libraries that we need, and we also set some constants right here. We have the frequency of the CPU. The default internal frequency is eight megahertz, but it has a divide by eight, so they actually ship at one megahertz, which is good because it'll consume less power. Then we have the constant of the servo down position, the servo up position for the glasses. Indoors and outdoors refers to the light levels, at which point it will trigger. We tested that using a different ADC. Uh, all right, so here's our main uh, part of the program. We define all of our ports here. Unlike an Arduino, you have to define the ports using the direction uh, port and the port B. You have to do it with bitwise operations, which you can see here. And we're also gonna set up the ADC, the analog digital converter, and the timer. The ADC is going to sense the light values and the timer is going to um, control the servo. So the first thing we'll do is we'll have a routine that just tries to drive the servo like back and forth, back and forth using the timer. So for our test, we're just gonna do this over and over. We're going to set the timer to the servo down position, wait two seconds, and then set it to the servo up position. Uh, about waiting two seconds, again, 
You need to make sure you include the library for the delay. See how I've got utility delay here. It's not going to automatically find it, so you have to define it and link it in AVR Studio 6 or it won't work. So it's more complicated than using the Arduino, but ultimately it's better for you. It's like Oat Bran versus uh, Twinkies. I'm going to build the solution. We don't have a debugger hooked up, but you can still hit play and it'll send it to your chip. So I'm going to turn on the chip, hit play, and it will send the code. Okay, the code's sent, now we can test it. Servo has uh, three pins. It's got ground, power, which is five volts, and signal. Now picture this as our eyeglasses on the side view. That's down and that's up. Down, up, down, <laughs> up. Here is a photo cell I got off of element 14. What the photo cell does is it, um, its resistance changes based off how much light it is receiving. The more light it receives, the lower the resistance. So we can hook this up to the ADC or analog to digital converter and uh, read it and that'll tell us how much light is shining on it. I guess it's kind of obvious. So to hook it up as a circuit, we put five volts in on one side. Okay. Then we have our signal here, which is at the junction of this 10K resistor and the other side of the uh, photo cell. We hook that up into our input. And then the other side, we hook it up to ground. What this does is it creates a voltage divider and the voltage at this point will vary depending on how much light gets through here. All right, so let's comment out the test section that we just drove, and now we're gonna comment back in check light. And what check light's gonna do is this. First, it's going to light equals read ADC, which means it's gonna get the ADC value from the photo sensor. Then if the light value is more than the outdoor constant, which is 750 out of a possible 1023, it will put the servo in the down position. Oh, it's bright out, <laughs> sunglasses are on. And if it's indoors, glasses come up. So let's do a test. It's in the up position. So I'm gonna use my cell phone flashlight to simulate the sun. There it goes down. Inside, outside. Inside, outside. Ah, it's going crazy! Okay, so the electronics are pretty much done. It wasn't rocket science. So now we have to figure out a way to attach that to some clip-on sunglasses. The idea is, you know, glasses are expensive. We don't want to muck up a pair of glasses. So we want the whole thing to clip on. But there probably will be a lanyard of some kind, like this one, that'll go around the back. Probably have like a battery pack back here. Do you want to know what the Matrix is? Have you heard about Element 14 TV, the new online TV channel for engineers? At Element 14 TV, you'll find videos from some of the hottest names in engineering. Not only will you find episodes of my show, but also videos by Jerry Ellsworth, Arduino tutorials by Jeremy Bloom, and much, much more. Element 14 TV features some of the most innovative new products happening in engineering today that just might inspire you to try something new. You can also find the latest videos from the world's leading electronic manufacturers, all in one place. The entire video library is completely free, so join Element 14 today and tune into Element 14 TV, the brand new TV channel for engineers. This is just another way that Element 14 makes it easy for engineers to be inspired and find the solutions they need to get the job done. And now, back to the show. Now we have to think about how to attach the servo to the glasses and the sunglass part. So my thought is, we'll use these remaining holes from the original mounts, and we'll put in a cross section across them, and then we'll put the servo here. So the center of the servo is lined up to this part here, so that's where it'll rotate. And then basically, so the, basically the glasses will be attached by the servo. And the servo can attach to this part of the glasses right here that doesn't bend. So you clip the servo on here and the glasses or the sunglasses come with it.
Last year, over three million people had to cut things by themselves, and they survived. I'm gonna show you the skills you need to cut things by hand and not have any of your fingers get lobbed off on Bear grills. I was in the Special Forces in England, as you can tell by my accent, and I've climbed glaciers, fought jaguars, and used aluminium. <laughs> okay, I think we're in the right direction here. Hello, I'm Orson Welles. I can eat three chickens for breakfast, two for lunch, and five for dinner. Rosebud. This is one of those cases where we could mock it up and do it in 3D and print it, but it would probably actually take longer to scan in the elements like the glasses than it would be just to make it by hand. It's just so many complex angles and science and things and stuff. I'm gonna hook up the signals. We got the potentiometer here, the pull down resistor, and then we're gonna have five volts, ground, uh, servo control, and ADC return from the potentiometer. So let's put them all on one cable. That way we can thread it back with the lanyard I've added. All right, here we've taken another AT Tiny and put it into a little board that we can attach to the sunglasses. We have two batteries here, which should provide us enough voltage, a power switch, a programming header, a capacitor, and a pull up resistor to keep it from resetting. And this wire that comes from the sunglasses will attach the signals to the chip. So we'll do that now and make sure it works and then we'll glue it all together. So we have our circuit board here attached to the lanyard just so it you know, helps the glasses stay around your neck. The data connection, or the power connection as it were. The light sensor, the servo, and the glasses attached to my regular glasses. So let's give it a try. Hmm, I wonder what's outside. It's kind of important that we um, make it so indoor light doesn't trigger it, which can be quite bright, but doesn't really compare to the sun. So it actually works pretty good. So even being out in shadow is considered bright, and in here is considered dark. Oh, I wonder what happens if you go in a car. Come with me if you want to live. Hello, everyone. Well, time for me to leave again. It's just so much fun, I can't stop doing it. So there you go, automatic sunglasses. And I did it without any computerized machinery, just my hands. So it's a cool project that might inspire you to build some stuff on your own at home. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, I'll be making the coolest Xbox 360 laptop yet. We'll see you then.